She doesn't fall neatly into any categories. She's really very much an independent artist doing her own thing. Motorsen Becker grew up in and around Bremen, which is in northern Germany, and she had a very fully developed artistic education. She went to a number of different schools in Paris and Berlin and London. In the summer of 1897, she went with her family to this small artist colony north of Bremen called Vorpsveda. She became completely fascinated by the artists there and the kind of works of art they made. Then she went back to Berlin where she continued her studies and then eventually in 1898, she moved to Vorpsveda where she would live on and off for the rest of her life. The Vorpsveda artist colony was very well known for depicting these beautiful, idyllic landscapes. In reality, the people lived a very, very harsh existence. And so the artists that came there to study were sort of perceived as a kind of middle-class other. She early on started doing close-up portraits of some of the villagers in Vorpsveda, specifically people from the poorhouse, nursing mothers, the elderly, and young children. So those were her models first and foremost. There was the ideal, and then there was the reality. And what Paula Motorsen Becker wanted to capture was the reality. I'm breathless. I want to go further and further. I can hardly wait until I'm a real artist. Her first visit to Paris was actually New Year's Eve, 1899, turning into 1900. She saw contemporary works of art that were being made at that time. You often have this sensibility in her letters that she's waiting and wanting to become something that she isn't yet, not only in her own personality, but also in her art. She moves from making drawings to working in oil paint on canvas. And it was between 1900 and 1907 that she created most of her painted production. Paula Becker very much respected Otto Modersen. He was one of the figures in the Vorpsveda art colony around 1901, they shifted from being artistic contemporaries to developing a romantic relationship after his wife died. She very much wanted to continue a career, but she started receiving letters from her parents that said, now that you're married and you have to raise Otto's child from his first marriage, you maybe need to put painting aside. And that was something that Paula was not willing to do. She was very interested in maintaining her own identity as a painter. And eventually she realized that to some extent, these worlds were incompatible for her. And in 1906, she really comes to a breaking point. She decides that she really wants to choose art and she doesn't think that she can be a wife and a mother to her stepdaughter and be an artist at the same time. So she leaves Otto and she moves to Paris. I feel as if I had been presented with a new life. It's going to be beautiful and rich. If there is something inside me, it is going to be released. I am me, and I hope to become me more and more. She does an amazing group of self-portraits, and many of them are really quite close up. She doesn't want to minutely depict her face or her eyes or her nose or her lips. They're very mask-like in their appearance. She was really interested in getting into the essence of things, the specialness of a particular object or a particular person. She calls her still lives and her portraits as depicting the gentle vibration of things. Depicting the female nude, both adult and children, was really very unusual for a woman artist. And then the fact that she used her own nude body in some of these paintings was seen as completely boundary pushing. She's really becoming the artist that she always wanted to become living in Paris. I am becoming somebody. How great of a person or how small, I cannot yet say, but whichever it is to be, it is going to be something complete. At that point, she and Otto reconcile. He comes to Paris and then they decide to return to Vorpsveda. So she comes back pregnant and she gives birth towards the end of 1907 and she's instructed to stay in bed two weeks after she died of an embolism. I think Motorsen Becker was very aware of the possibility that she could die during childbirth. She said, I may die prematurely and I hope to be known. Soon after her death, around 1919, there were a series of exhibitions and publication of her letters and diaries. So then her reputation really spread and only eight years later, a museum was founded in her name. She was really a pioneer in her time. She's seen as doing things before her male contemporaries were ever doing them. She has so much to teach us even today.